But before before we move further, Barista and Basia, I wanna I wanna yeah. really feel your pain and emotion to the fact that in a year 2024, when the world is going gro global, thinking of cybersecurity, networking, cloud computing, and a whole lot of them, Ambazonians are struggling to walk through a wooden, a locally wooden made bridge. How sad are you? Well, I think it's more than sad. And this should remind us, Ambazonians in particular, and Africans in general. We'll be singing the song of 1959, 1960, independence for Ambazonia, independence for Cameroon, first January, independence for ABC countries. What is the essence of independence? What was the goal of independence? Independence is meant for you to take hold of your own development. Okay. From the Americans. When the Americans drove away the British, control of their own development. All of us, everywhere in Africa, by the majority, are running to come to the United States. Why? Because even if you are doing it, at least you will drive, someone will drive you on a good road. You can go to a good hospital. You can go to a good school. That is what independence means. Mm -hmm. Why are we not doing this? Why is this not happening to us? most particularly to Ambazonia that you have referred to, since 1961. What do we lack? Do we lack the personnel? No. We have more than enough Ambazonia engineers, road construction engineers. We have more Ambazonian medical doctors and otherwise. Is it that we lack the money? No. We don't lack the money. We have more than enough mineral resources to do the development that we need. All what has happened to us is unfortunate that in spite of all the resources that we have, natural resources and human resources, we have nothing to show for them. In the whole of Cameroon that we know, the only oil that is piped out of that country and so and gas is from Amazonia. The money from those two things alone. It's enough to have developed all the roads in that tiny piece of land called Amazonia. To have dug the road, the railway, the railways that we needed. To have constructed the airports that we need. To have built the best schools that we could find in the world. But are the resources exploited? Of course. What becomes of the money is what we don't know. We're afraid about green coal. All these fat sums of money stolen from purely Amazonians, for which there's nothing to show, for example, India, that the gas that is being sold and stolen, that the oil that is being sold and stolen comes from India. Absolutely nothing. So why do we think that? What should anyone believe this nonsense of hanging ourselves to this people? This will make me transition to something I saw happening in Manu. Manu last weekend, this weekend that passed. We saw Something was reported from there which is interesting. How certain chiefs there came and some other youths calling on Mr. Pobia to take another turn. Well, these are Manu people. Whereas the young um, the regime got to show for Manu for the past 60, 70 years. Zero. In Manu in particular, at every single moment in the past 60, 70 years. They have had at least one, two ministers in the government. And many people ranking at the level of ministers. They have had generals, General Tato, Local B, all of them from Manu. And so what are they for it? They have produced, the, they have done their own share. All the timber that was in Manu, the Manu people who have said their land to you and me to be a house. No, they didn't say land. But they allowed the yeah, under to come and exploit their timber. You ask the question, where are the royalties for the timber from Manu? Zero. And if the man comes there shamelessly calling himself Tabi Tando, who has been permanently resident in Douala, who is now uh, in command in the Senate, telling you to go vote for Mr. Paul Bia, not to talk about fighting for independence from Amazonia. No. To him, it means nothing. And so, what is the development that you can show? What do you with development? What can you show? 
for the past 70 years, 60 something years that we have had independence. That was but, but, but Barristan Basia, let me cut you there in a bit. Across the world recently, following the recent happenings in different parts of the world, both in most developed climes, you know, Venezuela and the rest of them, the UK. I'm not even talking about the African countries here, talking about across the globe. We have seen citizens not getting satisfied with the promises or the involvement of government in their lives. And so they take to the streets to pour their plight, their anger, their frustration, whatever word we want to use, and posing exactly what they want to see. And so it means they are not comfortable with government not giving them enough water, enough light, enough power, even job and all of that. They go to the street, the world is aware that this particular government is not doing what they are supposed to do. The plight of Ambazonians are so immersed that I wonder and I ask, what is stopping Ambazonians in general or in their different um, counties putting out a protest to their mayors and DOs on their expectations? Do you know how much they desire to suffer? if Ambazonians in general have suffered for over 70 years and counting, how much more years would they want to suffer? The world is moving and Ambazonians are left behind. Why does it seem like they do not have a voice to do more than they are doing at the moment? Well, I think if you want me to revisit all that story, I will tell you a bit. Let us reflect back. All those demon demonstrations in Venezuela, or anywhere in the world, what you saw in Nigeria a few weeks ago, mm. demonstrations work. In fact, what is the goal of the demonstration? To show the population, the internal population of that country, mm. that something is wrong. To show the government. Yeah. And to let the world that supports it to know that something is going wrong there. Mm -hmm. But there's it the world can do. The whole idea, demonstrations have meaning. Only when the government in place thinks that those demonstrations can affect it. How do so demonstrations you mean, So you mean like, like 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 the protest like like the story we just did where people do not have basic routes to probably move from one point to the other, they have to um, trust on the locally made um, breach that we just saw. You mean that these people cannot cry? in either way, shout, scream, however they want to go about it to their colonial leaders to say, oh, we do not want this anymore. We want this instead. You mean they do not have the rights to do so? They have the right to do all that. But what I'm trying to say is, having a right to do it does not mean that it will change anything. Because the American, uh, the Cameroon political system is set up in such the government in Yaoundé is not dependent on the vote of the people where those people are building those hammocks you call bridges. It's not dependent on your father and my mother who live in the village and they have no drinking water. They have no influence over the government. They don't put the government there. They are not responsible for the government being in place. They cannot bring down the government. Because they, as I've said many times before here, elections have never taken place in Cameroon as a block since 1961 since 1960 they have not had any elections there's nobody there in parliament in senate who can hit his chair and say my people voted for me to be here he cannot do it because the structures are such that those demonstrations have no meaning which is why we are fighting that will not happen in Amazonia. we we'll have to get the government put up by the people for the people and by the people the government that the demonstration in that village, those pictures would call somebody in that village to say, I'm not casting my vote for you anymore. Because he is to have vote counts. Those villagers tying those things with bamboos and falling and drowning in the streets. Do their votes count in here one day? No. Do their votes count anywhere? Call it Senate, call it uh, whatever nonsense you call it a council. Do their votes count? The votes don't count. 
So if you are a senator, if you are a parliamentary, you don't owe your position to the villagers, to the people who are protesting, which is what has brought us to this thing, which I was saying. For example, what are the resources? Why are the people in Dian from which this money is all coming out not protesting? Do they have people in parliament? They have a lot of powerful people in parliament. You should all see. They have people in Yaoundé, the young Gute. But can these people, as politicians, claim that they owe their presence in Yaoundé to anybody in Dian? Zero. And so, which is one of the reasons why we are fighting this war. In the true Ambazonian, the hammock that you see passing over that bridge, in that stream, counts. Mm. The drowning of a child in that river counts. Because the drowning of a child will give a warning sign that they have not put a bridge there. Whoever sits there representing those people will lose the vote. Will you vote for this guy who could not put a bridge here and your child is drowned? No. You can't get put somewhere else. So we uh, setting up an Ambazonia as it was before mm -hmm. to reflect the wish of free Ambazonia. We will not sit in Boyanja write papers and create schools. A school will be created by need. And once created, the school has to be staffed. Once staffed, the teachers have to be paid. The buildings have to be put in place. Otherwise, you don't count on the vote of that village. There's no accountability there. As I gave you the example, we saw the demonstration in Nigeria going on for two weeks. They cut a mission. They told Tinibu, this is what we want. Tinibu is <laughs> because they know that whether you like Tinibu or not, you want the election anyway. So if we election don't count, demonstrations have no meaning. Because you can demonstrate in that village, wherever you are. You can even go and cash, say in Boya. Or Mamma, you can go and cash you the governor and kill him. How would that affect the Minister of Territorial Administration in Yaoundé, zero. You simply appoint another one there whose goal is to take his allowances, to take money for himself. Mm. But, but, but a leader, whether appointed or elected, I mean, he's, he's still there to serve the people. So the people know that that leader owe them all of that. So I, I think that if the people even understand the kind of strength they have, they know that they have the right to deserve and request whatever they want. No, I think uh, uh, the way you put it is wrong. A leader, whether appointed or elected, is not the same. Mm. A, a leader is elected based on the pol political promises he makes to the people. If you elect me, we'll put a bridge over that river. Mm. Do you impose and people? If, do you impose a leader? You impose a leader, the people have the right to reject the leader you've imposed on them. So, of course, which, so, is what is going yeah. on now, which is what is going on now. You appoint a leader, which is what we are against. You appoint somebody by decree, he's appointed. He's not going to serve the interest of the people, he's serving the interest of his appointee, the guy who appointed him. Because it is the other guy who appointed who will remove him. The guy who is elected owes his. We never had that type of nonsense in West Cameroon. We had everybody who was to be a government minister was first of all elected. We went to parliament. He won the election to parliament. And the ministers were chosen from among the parliamentarians. They were not decreed. No. We first won the election in the parliament. They chose it. They needed 10 ministers. They chose them from among the members of parliament. Which is not what is going on now. So the people can make those demands. I don't, I don't deny they're making the demands. But it will make no difference. You only find somebody coming to promise you something if you vote Paul Bia. Not me. If you vote Paul Bia, he will do this for you. But how many of those local politicians, including the ones in Manfred, the ones in Fumba, the ones in Bahamana, how many of them have ever seen Paul Bia with the, with the eye? You know Paul Bia. How many of them know what? When Paul Bia signs a decree, he said he should go and construct a bridge over a non existent river. So people just take money. So that is the great difference. And this, that is the basis, one of the basis for this struggle. We shall return to accountability politically, financially, economically, and otherwise. Otherwise, why is the sense of having independence? I bring it back again.
What is the essence of independence? If independent countries, independent communities cannot take their own development into their own hands. And so, okay. it's unfortunate for these people, but the bottom line is that they have been manipulated. After all that, you see those, somebody has taken that picture and sent to us. What, do you, what else will the people do? A certain guy will come there. If somebody drowned there, you find a duo. Come in there to say, okay, we take care of your problem, we'll send it somewhere else. That duo, he said, I never send the president. He doesn't even know where the president lives. Who gives the decree? The governor does not see the president. I don't know how many governors have ever seen Paul be here with their eyes. Wow. They don't know him. And so, we are looking for a future ambassador. That would be a country that will design for ourselves the roads that we design, that we construct. If we take the loans and we say, okay, we have to take a loan to build this ring road, for example. I will say, okay, this year, everybody in his or her taxes is adding 500 francs on the ring road because we can borrow money to do this. We will gladly do that. Because if you pay the 500 francs, we know that for five years we must pay this loan. After five years, the loan is not paid. We will be held accountable. I think that's the bigger context of the problem. Over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Barry Stambesia.